In 2020, the Lord told me we need to move into a wealth initiative. It's an initiation to be able to generate a new level of wealth for people that are suffering and sacrificing and going through some financial concerns and issues that they may be challenged with. And so I began with a, a small page called the Wealth Initiative on Facebook. And so, of course, if you go on Facebook, you'll be able to see it there. But with that, I recognize the importance of being able to build uh, build wealth through business. That's exactly what the Lord did with my wife and I. Uh, I was totally fine being poor. I didn't know that I was poor. I didn't lack anything, so I really was rich. But I was only making about $13,000 for the entire year. That's my That was my total gross income, $13,000 a year. Married with one child and one on the way, making $13,000 a year. But I didn't have a home. I rented. I had a car, small payment on a car, only one vehicle. I was totally, totally fine, totally fine. Didn't think that I needed anything more. And uh, But then the Lord spoke to me one day. And he says, uh, I want to prosper you, but you have to believe me for it. I didn't believe in the ability to prosper. I didn't think there was any way that I could prosper. I worked for the church, Faith Please God Church, and I received $13,000 a year. That was it. So it was about $1,100 a month, a little less than. We're talking gross, not net. Gross. That means after taxes and so forth, it was less than that. After I paid my tithe, $130, or excuse me, $110, $110 tithe. And then my offering was about another $20 on top of that. It didn't leave me, but maybe $900. I paid $300 for my car, a little less than, and about $100 for my insurance. Uh, then $300 for my rent. And my gas was about $100 a month at the time, maybe a little less. So it only left us about four to five hundred dollars, uh, three to four hundred dollars a month for food. And it was my wife and I, and we had a baby with diapers. So it wasn't a lot of money, but God took care of me. I was okay, okay. wasn't hungry, but by the time I finished paying for everything, our average was about twelve dollars left in the bank. So we were net positive. $12 every month, net positive. But you know, that always made its way out of the bank. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, uh, I want to prosper you. And But I needed to let him. I didn't know what that meant, to be frank with you. I didn't know what that meant. It was a Sunday morning, I'll never forget the day, and the Lord said, I want to prosper you and turn you into a millionaire. I didn't want to be a millionaire. I I always thought that was just a big problem. Why, why would I want to be a millionaire? Now, truth be told, I had no desire to prosper. I had no desire to make more money. I had no desire for cars, big houses, zero, zero, zero. I had no desire for any of that. Didn't think about it. Be frank with you, it wasn't even on my radar. And I understand there's a lot of people that are watching this broadcast right now that you have no desire to be rich, no desire of it. And that's fine. I'm not saying you have to be. And I don't believe that everybody needs to be. I'll be totally frank with you. I don't, I don't. That's just my opinion. But the Lord told me, I, I want to, I want, the Lord said, I want to make you into a millionaire. And I said to him, why, why do I want to be a millionaire? There's no way I'm going to be a millionaire. How could I be a millionaire? I work for the ministry. I have no interest in leaving the ministry. I, there's, it, it was so far from my even wildest imagination. Because I thought to myself, in order for me to be a millionaire, being in the ministry, I got to rob the people. These are real conversations inside me. I said, there's no way I'll have to rob the people. So I understand when someone says, oh, those preachers are robbing people. I get that. I get what they're saying because that's the way I saw it, that I'm going to rob the people. If the Lord wants me to be a millionaire, I'm going to have to rob the people because I'm never leaving the, the church. I'm never leaving the ministry. I'm going to be in it all the days of my life. I had no intentions of ever quitting the ministry, so it made no sense to me. For the Lord to even say that to me, it was ludicrous. But he said, well, will you believe me that I have a way? I'll be frank with you. 
It stretched my faith. I had faith for healing. I saw miracle signs and wonders. I received my healing. Blind eyes open, gold teeth, people receiving a new spine, tumors falling off the body. I've seen lives change. Devils leave people's lives. Marriages come back together. People that were addicts and adulterated and so forth. God mending, mending them. And I saw God prosper many people, bankers and lawyers and doctors and businessmen. I saw the prosperity of God. And I agreed with the prosperity of God, but I just couldn't see how in the world can God prosper a preacher. I didn't. Made no sense to me. Without robbing from the people, and I refuse to do that, I'll never rob from anybody. And he says, but if you believe me, I'll show you and I'll do, I will do it. He said, he will prosper me. I had no, it wasn't like I asked the Lord, Lord, prosper me, Lord, make me a millionaire, Lord. Oh, I didn't ask. I did not ask for it. I said, why do you, then I said, why do you want me to be a millionaire? He says, because that's the way I bring support financially into the ministry. I need to prosper you because you're faithful and you're a giver. You have the gift of giving. It's found in the book of First Timothy. I'll share it with you on another day. I said, okay. I said, okay, how's this work? He says, give me everything you have. Wait a minute, what? Give me everything you have. What do you mean give you everything? All that I have is yours. Yeah, so give it to me. I leaned over to my wife. This was during service. This was happening like lightning. You know, when God speaks to you, it's because he's... It's lightning fast inside your spirit, man. I leaned over to my wife and I said, honey, how much we have in the bank? She told me. And I said, can you write a check for all of it? And she goes, well, I got to keep a little bit in there because there's like a $12 fee for the expenses of just having a bank account. Bank accounts aren't free. <laughs> Unless if you have a lot of money in it, it still costs you. And they always figure out how to get fees out of you. So anyway, so he said, can, can I leave like $12 in the bank? I said, okay. I don't remember how much was in the bank, to be frank with you. I don't know. She knows. I don't know. I said, make a check out for the difference. Again, can we give it? Now, now God provided me a, just a precious bride that obeys God and, and understands the principle of believing and agreeing by faith with your spouse. And she didn't ask me any questions, to be frank with you. I think the Lord was speaking to her too at the same time. And that's really how the Lord works. And so she wrote the check out. And we put it in the offering and we gave it. The following week, there was a, several steps that I'll talk about later, but there were several steps that had taken place. Just some phone calls that I made, I had to make, dealing with the ministry, focusing on growing the ministry, expanding the kingdom, reaching out for souls. And by the end of the week, I ended up with a business called Ortiz Media Group. And then by the end of the month, I had a check that was given to me from a TV station for some airtime that I sold. That was the phone calls that I was having. By, by the end of the year, I netted. I remember, I was making gross $13,000 a year in my, that was my salary, $1,100 a month. That was the only income in my house. That was it. My wife wasn't making any money. But by the end of the year, we brought in $92,000. $92,000 in Ortiz Media Group. The second year, we brought in $300,000 over. I think it was like $360,000. And by the third year, my CPA said, do you know how much you're worth? I didn't have a clue says, you're worth $1.8 million. I said, what? Within three years, the Lord made me, the Lord made me into a millionaire. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. I didn't, it wasn't a desire. It wasn't a passion. It wasn't greed. It wasn't any of that. And I gave, um, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to the ministry. I remember the CPA saying, I think it was like, I gave $290,000 to the church one year. And 
He says, you're giving too much to the church because you can't write it off. You can only write off 35% of your income. And I said, well, I'm not giving to the church because I'm looking for a write-off. I'm giving everything that I have to the church. I'm keeping whatever I needed for the house. And the Lord blessed me with a house, blessed my wife and I. Four bedroom, two bath house. Only cost us thirty thirty three thousand dollars for the house. A four bedroom, two bath. The Lord blessed me with a pickup truck. It cost me like two hundred and twenty dollars a month for the truck. He blessed me with a second pickup truck, paid cash. Um and just blessing after blessing, year by year by year by year. Year by year by year by year, bless me. I continue to fund the ministry of my month to this day. To this day. This was 1992 was the time I had the conversation. 91, 92. 1991, 92 is when I had the conversation that the Lord wanted to bless me. Make me into a millionaire. I had no desire. To this day, I still, I still don't have that desire. I don't have the desire. I'm not, I don't. I had a BMW brand new because my wife got it for me. Said, you need to have it. I don't want it. That's, that's what I am. She goes, you need to have a good car. She knew that we were traveling a lot and I needed to have a good car. I had a Mercedes Benz because I had, I had the, I didn't have a vehicle. I needed a vehicle. So I went to an auction and I had some money in my bank like $5,000 or $6,000 or whatever. And I needed, I paid cash for things. And I said, I need a car and I didn't want to buy on payment. So I went to an auction and I ended up, I ended up with like a $25,000 gold Mercedes Benz. It was so gaudy. It was gold with 24 karat gold rims and all. But it, it was with the money that I had in the bank. And uh, I just went over there just to buy a car on an auction. I didn't know what I was going to end up buying, but that's what I ended up. That's what, that's what God does for you. And then when the people criticized me of having that car, I went and I, I traded it for a Pathfinder. <laughs> ended up with a brand new Pathfinder. A used old Mercedes, I traded it for a Pathfinder. I got blessed. All my houses blessed. All my transportation is blessed. My private plane, I was blessed with it. And, and I've lived since 1992 under the scripture of, I uh, believe it's Isaiah 66, come by and eat you who have no money. That's why I live. And um, it's a different type of wealth because people have asked me for years, where do you get your money? First of all, it's not mine. And it's not the members of the church. It's business, but it's not mine. It belongs to God. He told me to give them everything. So I did, and I still do give them everything. And um, it's a different way of thinking, but it's the way he wants us to live. The Israelites didn't own anything, yet they had, the Bible said that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And when he's your father, you get to eat his cattle. You get to live on his land. You get to be in his house. You get to drive his vehicles. That I have a, a 2019 Ford F-150. It's a 2019 Ford F-150, and the tag says it was manufactured on fourth quarter, 2019, and I bought it in 2020. And I paid $36,000 for a 4x4 F-150 with a six inch lift and big tires and has everything in it, completely power everything. It is an 80 to $90,000 pickup truck that we paid $36,000 for. God did that. My wife drives a Tesla that the book value on that Tesla was I think like 80,000, 90,000. And she paid 40,000 for it. Why do we get these things half price? It's, and it's not like we serve a discount God. It's just that God's money doesn't want to go pay retail. So it's, 
it's all the Lord's. And it's not like we went to go buy a Tesla. We didn't go buy a Tesla. We went on vacation and my wife's car was a 2017. My wife's car was a 2017 Ford Escape, which we still own, paid off the 2017 Ford Escape and she had 163,000 miles on it. And so it was time for us to get her a new car. She needed something new, but we were, we weren't, we went on vacation and woke up in the morning. We got a notice of a Tesla. She's been praying and believing that we get a Tesla because we don't want to pay for gas anymore. I'll always have a gas car, but we didn't want to pay for gas anymore. So why not have a Tesla? And so, they sent the notice to us. We got an email somewhere that it was it was so cheap, it would be stupid not to buy it. And so we had the money and we were on vacation. We went on, we went on vacation in my pickup truck and we came back on two cars, my pickup truck and a Tesla. That's the way the Lord does these things. He does these things. Come by and eat, you who have no money. And so the Lord wants to prosper you, but you have to give everything to the Lord. And that's what everybody says. And the preacher's asking for all, he's trying to rip you off. No, I understand. I understand that question, but you're wrong. But you won't know it because you're not in my bank account. You're not in my bank account. And so you don't know it. So you just have to trust me. And, and what's that worth? That Even that statement, trust me. I, so I, you know, so then I say it's your problem. Sorry, but... I will be judged when I get to heaven of the things that I do, good or bad. So that's that's the govern the governance that I live under is the judgment of God and not the judgment of man. So I really don't care what you say other than it puts you in a position that you'll be judged when you get to heaven for the false accusation that you have on me. So my whole desire is just to teach the innocence the Lord wants to prosper you, but that's what it takes. And if you got caught halfway of this video, you got to go to the very beginning and understand what I'm saying and know why I'm saying it. Because God wants to prosper you and bless you. And so every house I've ever bought, I didn't have the money. Every car that I've ever driven, I didn't have the money. Um, but God takes care of it because in 1992, I decided to give everything to him. My wife and I have been married since 1997, and he's still, we saw the fingerprint of God, 97, 98, 99, or excuse me, 87. We got married at 87, forgive me. We got married in 1987. 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, and then 92, I got the revelation. 97, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91. For five years, we saw the fingerprint of God, and then on the seventh year, five years, six years, 92, he gave us a direction to give everything to him. By 93, I was uh, prospered. 94, 95, I saw the miracle power of God. And it's every seven years, the Lord did something with us. And so he wants to do something with you. So I started what's called Wealth Initiative on Facebook. And... I want to help people enter into their business, but the purpose of business is not, look, you can be prospered, but it's about giving everything to the Lord. You got to give it all to him. And when you give it all to him, he trans, he, he makes sure that you never lack, you never want anything. Psalms 23 comes to work. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And a lot of this doesn't make any sense to you. I understand it. So that's why you have to operate by faith. And I'm not telling you to give everything to the church. I want you to hear the Lord and do what he tells you to do. Because he might not tell you to do that. But he did tell me to do it. That's how it worked for me. So you just be led by the Holy Ghost and what he tells you to do. I just know that the Lord doesn't want you to live poor. And he wants you to live a good life. And he wants to build his church. And it takes money to do all that. So listen to this video a couple of times and you'll probably get it. <laughs> I love you.